Hello everybody, this is Gzilla2010 again, coming at you with another Godzilla toy review. Today we'll be looking at the Bandai Creation Hedora. Oh boy, where do I begin on this figure? Such controversy. Okay, before I get into that, let's look at the detail on this figure, as always. Being Hedora, he, I mean, being made of sludge and so the like, garbage, acid, blah, whatever you want to call it, um, he, you would expect him to be very detailed, and he is. This is a very nicely detailed figure. I particularly like um, the face uh, section, and this little bit right here just looks especially like the suit. I don't know why, but that, person, that part looks very nice. Um, you can see the arms, the back, and the tail. All look fairly nice. All kinds of uh, flaps and like tentacles kind of things and sludge and all that gross, icky stuff. Um, his eyes look very nice. They don't quite have the charisma and the sharpness of the Japanese one, as they are a bit droopy, but they do look very nice and menacing. The cracks on his head are nicely detailed as well. And let's talk about paint job on this figure. Um, I have heard that there are, and I've seen at least, that there are different variants of paint job on this figure. There are some variants of Hedora that have, are like more black than silver on the top and even on the bottom. Like it's just more black in there. There's just this other variants of Hedora. Um, I've seen more white on some places, but with mine particularly, we have the silver face, which I'm sure is what it was intended to be. They have the silver face, and we have the mostly just black underside in here. We have a little bit of red in here. We have some green, we have green on the top of the head, red for the eyes, and some gold in there for the pupils, or the, I don't know what that part is called, the colored part. <laughs> And we also have just a wash of different colors in here, mostly red that goes down here, but there are a few other colors that you can't really see in this light. Um, on the back is especially where the colors get a little mishmashy. We have a mixture of the silver and the black, and a lot of blacks. Black is the dominant color here. We have reds and greens. I have heard in other versions there are um, patches of white as well. Mine does not have any of that white in here. Although, the silver, I guess, kind of looks like some white in some places. Um, we have red for mine going down the tail here. And into that little blip there. <laughs> and, yeah, overall the paint is very nice on this figure. Um, I, it's not entirely accurate, but then again, Hedor, none of the Hedoras that I've seen so far that are reasonably priced, at least, are accurate with their uh, paint job. So... Next, let's look at articulation. In case you didn't know, which would be surprised if you didn't know, this figure does not have any articulation at all. Zero articulation points, even though he has this gigantic seam right here. And he has some seams in here. And he has this... Actually, that seam's not too bad. Is this seam here. So, yeah, you can't pose this figure at all. He's just this standard, like, tall piece of poop, basically. <laughs> so, aside from that, let's take a look at some scaling. First, let's scale him up to his Japanese counterpart, the Bandai Japan Hedora. I have already reviewed this Hedora, you can check it out, but I did compare these two in that video. Um, Obviously, as I've said before, this Hedora is much smaller than the Bandai Creation Hedora, which is practically this one's only downside. As you can see, this one is far more movie accurate, um, and it does have some art a couple articulation points. Everything's just better on this figure. Yeah, to be honest, that's true, but <laughs> that's just that. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, you may notice something missing on Hedora's back. The uh, egg sac that you see here is missing. I don't know why they did not choose to include this egg sac. Maybe they thought it would be too disgusting and gross, but, you know, like, look at that face. Like, you think that's not... Yeah, like, that's fine, but... No, you can't have this bulbous thing on the back that nobody knows what it is. It's disgusting, right? Yeah. Okay. 
so let's scale him up with a few counterparts here. First, let's compare him to the Bandai Creation 1968 Godzilla. You may notice this one looks a bit different because this is the translucent one. Um, I decided not to pull out the actual one because it's kind of stuck in a hard place between a bunch of different figures. So I just pulled out this one. It's the exact same mold, and it's the only difference is that it's translucent. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at these two together. Um, as you can see, this is inaccurate because the this Godzilla is, as I've said many, many times before, extremely oversized. <laughs> I don't know why it's so big, but they made it so that Hedora is smaller than it, and this is one of the bigger uh, Bandai Creation uh, figures, or it's a regular size, more or less. So this one is very large, and it does not scare, scale properly. But let's take a look at the Japan 1968 Godzilla, which is like the same thing, but smaller. So let's take a look at them. This is actually fairly accurate. Um, I think Hedora is a bit bigger, but Hedora is bigger than this uh, 1968 Godzilla, so this still works um, if you wanted to make a fan movie. I'm sure the old um, Japanese figure works better, or the memorial box one. This one obviously does not work with this any, either of those Godzillas, but this is still a fine scaling, and it would work just well with anything else that you might have. So, props to the 68 Godzilla Japanese. These next few comparisons will just be for funsies, since I don't really have an Ebera, an Ebebebe, can't talk today, <laughs> an Ebera figure to compare him to. So, let's look at King Caesar, again, presumably the 1974 version. Um, this, I'm not sure how accurate this would be, because, uh... Hedorah is slightly bigger than King Caesar, but he's not that much bigger. They're more or less the same size in several regards. So, I don't think this is too accurate. But regardless, it would still be okay. Next, next let's look at the Bandai Creation 1974 Mechagodzilla. Um, as we can see here, this Hedorah figure is obviously much larger and bulkier than the skinny Mechagodzilla, and it is also taller than that. Um, I think this would work. I know Mechagodzilla is taller than Godzilla. In fact, let me just, let's just pull out this guy here for a second. Let's see how they compare. That's about accurate, actually. So, I think this could work if Hedorah was, if not, a bit bigger. So overall, not bad. Show us scaling here. And lastly, let's just take a look at some two villains here. Let's take a look at Muto and Hedora. This is the Bandai Japan 6-inch uh, male Muto figure. Uh, I don't believe a female one exists. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but this is the only 6-inch Muto that I know of as of right now. Um, I'm not sure how this would work because the Showa and the uh, Legendary series are on two completely different scales, and if you take Final Wars into account, which puts them more at uh, larger scales, this would be even harder to pinpoint, I think. So, other otherwise, they would just look really neat together, don't they? <laughs> two awesome Godzilla villains. So. Next, let's get into some of the controversies surrounding this figure. Obviously, the articulation and the lack of the lack of articulation and the lack of the um, egg sac on his back caused quite a bit of backlash from fans of Bandai Creation and fans of Godzilla toy collecting in general. Um, I personally have no beef with this figure. I mean, it's. I have the Japan one, so I really don't care what this one does, besides this is my first Hedora figure, and it's it's okay on its own, um, but I really never had too much of a problem with it. It, it looks fine, to be honest, I, I was glad to pick it up just because of how controversial it was and how many people were talking about it um, back when it came out. Let's see, when did this come out? It came out in 2007. Wow, that's... A, that was almost ten years ago. That's nine years ago now that this came out. Um, and it's caused very much controversy since then. 
but um, after a lot of that has died down, obviously, and people have moved on, we have SH Monsters and NECA to think about, Nobody, and people seem to forget about these. I never forgot, I love these guys. <laughs> Another thing that people uh, gripe about a lot is the tiny tail. And before it never used to bother me, but looking at it now, it kind of does, because it's very short. Let's take a look at the Japanese one again. Look at that tail. That's great. And it's also like curved up like this. Instead of just being like flat, make it have... I dropped it. <laughs> make it have some life and liveliness. If you would call it that, to this death monster. <laughs> Whereas this one is just like... <laughs> which is probably what this guy would say at rebuttal. <laughs> Um, as a quick note, this is obviously not his box, but I don't have his box on hand, so that's about how he would fit in a Bandai Creation box, just kind of sit up like that straight. Sideways it wouldn't fit, so it just sit up like that. So overall, that is the end of the review. Um, this figure is uh, lackluster, to, <laughs> to say the least. Um, it is an older Bandai Creation figure, so it's not super common these days. Um, you can find it, however, on eBay, probably fairly reasonably priced. You're not, it's not going to be super expensive. New, new, brand new ones that haven't been opened might be, but if you're just looking for one just to share in the controversy back then, then this is definitely a, a nice piece to pick up. Um, Otherwise, if you're looking for a good Hedora figure, I would say definitely stay away from this one. It's not a great figure, but it's definitely not the worst thing that I've seen. Hint, hint. This actually isn't the worst, but it's pretty bad. Anyway, um, overall, I would give this figure a 3 out of 10, because the lack of articulation and the lack of some certain body parts um, are not great for this figure. However, it is not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's definitely a decent figure, and it's fine if you don't have any other Hedora figures, unlike myself. The Japanese ones are, and the X Pluses, and the Marmots, or whatever you might want to collect, otherwise collect, um, are very expensive figures nowadays, especially the um, Marmots and the X Pluses. So this is fine to have if you don't have another Hedora figure. But if you're looking for a good one, I would suggest seeking out one of those for a, reason, a more reasonable price. So yes, 3 out of 10, that's what I would give this figure. Alright, this is Gizilla2010, signing out. Bye.